To lead off the program today, let's say good morning to Steve Stolifer. He is the Jefferson County Commission president. Steve, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. How are you? Excellent. Great to have you on the program. We had your wife on the program, I guess, about a month ago. Oh, good deal. Steve? Oh, I'm sorry I missed that. I'm sorry I missed that episode. I didn't know she was on. I'm sorry. <laughs> she didn't tell you? <laughs> no, she didn't tell me. <laughs> oh, well, she she did very well. She's quite impressive. Well, thank you. Yeah, we were we were discussing the water and sewer issues in some of the municipalities that they're facing with uh, uh, I guess a new company coming in and uh, trying to buy up some of these uh, smaller companies which are having some financial issues. Yes, that's a that's a, certainly is a hot topic right now. Um, I know the the Jefferson County Commission. We just recently uh, wrote a letter of support, um, basically uh, not. Not not really getting into the sale of the utilities, but just say just supporting the customers and um, really not supporting them in a way that they're not wouldn't receive a hundred and fifteen percent increase in water rates. That's sort of proposed right now. Yeah, and uh, that's still out there awaiting a, a PSC decision, Steve, or has that been settled? That uh, it's my understanding, it's it has not been settled yet. Go ahead, Bill. Yeah, I was going to say, American Water has a reputation of trying to milk the customers for a maximum amount they can get away with it. They've, all, they've for years, they've been mostly in the southern part of the state, uh, but they've uh, their rates are invariably higher than most of the rest of the state. Steve, how much? That's, con- uh, yeah, that's my understanding as well, too. Mm-hmm. How much control, if any, does the Jefferson County Commission have in those situations? No. Um, we, the Jer- I this goes back it predates me we had three um different users here just in the central part of the county in charlestown ranson and the jefferson county had psc uh um, district here um they were consolidated predating me going on the commission and they all got consolidated all three of those units got consolidated into charlestown um so in so essentially your to your answer uh Jefferson County Commission doesn't have control over the any of the utilities aspects of things. Uh, we, along with Ranson, has turned all of our assets over to Charlestown. Yeah, uh, Public Service Commission has the final say so on what the rates would be. At least I think they do. I uh, uh, that was the case until maybe uh, a year or so ago. There was some movement at that time. The legislators actually diverted some of the PSC, Public Service Commission's powers or authority, uh, to the local county commission. But I believe the rates are still vested within the uh, Public Service Commission. What happens if, you're, the, you're if, if the commission decides not to approve rates? Do, I mean, do they just... They don't have oh the uh, public service commission. Public service commission. Yeah, the, they uh, and they do that quite a bit. There's uh, so this so is does water disappear. <laughs> No, no, it comes vapor. <laughs> <laughs> now the uh, the uh, public service district still has an obligation and requirement to provide services, uh, and it's a compromise or not? It's an agreement of of how much they charge for this. But public service commission makes that determination. But that in no way gives the public service district the right or the authority not to provide services. They are obligated to do that. Steve, I wanted to make sure I timed out your appearance with Bill Coast, and because Bill is former president of the Berkeley County Commission, back when it was still a commission, uh, was involved in negotiating some of the changeover in emergency services here in Berkeley County, and that included negotiating with the volunteer fire department staff and the paid fire department staff, and I know Jefferson County is undergoing similar conversions right now. Can you update us on the status of that? Absolutely. On March 1st, we have officially uh, was our uh, transition date where we took over. Uh, so March first, it's, it's been operating now um, just for a couple weeks. Uh, really, nothing, no big changes. Uh, we had to maneuver around a few uh, locations, uh, move some ambulances around where they needed to be. Um, so far, so good. Everything is running um, very well. Uh, we, as you know, I think I've been on the show talking about this before, um, we have moved our ambulances to four locations. They're they're operating out of company one, two, three, and four, which uh, is Upstairs, Shepherdstown, Charlestown, and Ranson. And um, we're, we actually increased a uh, the service 
Currently, we had uh, five career during the day and four at night. We're going from six career during the day and, and five at night. Um, we, unlike Berkeley County, we did things a little different. I think Berkeley County and Bill can help me out to uh, this aspect of it. They went out and built some, am, I'll, call them, I'll call them ambulance-only stations. We are keeping our EMTs and paramedics inside the fire stations because our guys and ladies are dual trained. So they will go out uh, on a fire apparatus if needed, a rescue apparatus if needed, as well as the ambulance service. Now, in addition to Bill being formerly the president of the Berkeley County Commission, my other co-host, New York Times bestselling author John Gilstrap, made his profession as an emergency services worker himself uh, while he was uh, working for a living before he started writing books and such. So i got a couple of uniquely qualified co-hosts to ask you some questions here today. Steve, Bill, why don't you go ahead first? Yeah, uh, you're right. Uh, Berkeley County took a different approach than what uh, Jefferson County did. Uh we were the first in the state to move in that direction, so we felt it very important uh, to have full maximum court, uh, cooperation with the volunteers. And it took us two or three years before the volunteers actually bought into what we were trying to do. Uh, but I think those two or three years was well spent. Uh, and uh, uh, the objective is to get where you where you are. Uh, that's probably more important than the path which you took. So I uh, I'm going to be watching with great interest and a lot of support to make sure that what you've done will actually be for the uh, will meet all the needs of the community and and i from what i've heard you say and others say there's a uh, the, in all probability this will happen absolutely john, hey john gilstrap hey steve this is john gilstrap uh, so Within the new structure, you've, we've got the paid crews on the ambulance, and then we have the volunteers, largely volunteer on, on the fire apparatus. So if there is a heart attack, stroke, one of the big uh, high-end medical calls, does the fire apparatus run uh, also dispatched, or is it just the ambulance? It, on the high-end calls, like you mentioned, we will run the ambulance, and they will then take a chase car with an additional paramedic if they need additional crews or sometimes send another unit if they need to. Uh, we don't, won't necessarily send a fire truck along with these calls. Uh, obviously, the only time the fire truck leaves the station is on fire calls uh, or, or, or some type of accident. Um, but we will send additional crews on a high-end call like you mentioned. And is there mutual aid into nearby uh, Berkeley County and Morgan County? Yes, yeah, so we do have mutual aid with uh, uh, Berkeley, Clark, and um, Loudoun County. Loudoun County. Yes, sir. Oh, interesting. Occasionally, occasionally here in uh, in, in Jefferson, we will um, have a crew that comes from Loudoun. Huh. Ma- mainly fire, more more so fire than EMS. Yeah, it seems that it, the. What are the response times in Jefferson County now for EMS calls on average? Or what? what um, I, let's do it this way. What, it's a little early, I guess, to judge uh, the the difference. But before the change, what were the uh, average response times? I wanted to pull all that up. I do get a updated report every morning at six o'clock on the previous day um, call volume um, and the time for dispatch i was reading up so every morning at 6 a.m i look over this report and i look at the uh dispatched and arrived time and i just got done reading i uh, reading it this morning and you know there's some in there you know three four minutes and there's some you know six seven minutes um the uh average i think the bench the benchmark on the pitch report was uh in our area was under 15. And I believe if we, once we move to this model, this study uh, suggested that we would drop a minute, moving to a more centralized type of a model like, we're, like we went to. And yeah. are volunteer EMTs and paramedics counted as staffing on the new ambulances? We are currently working on a MOU to allow the volunteers to ride along on our ambulances that is still in the works um the volunteers right now on a couple of the stations uh they have decided to to you to, 
to go to rapid response, um, and then they so therefore they can also assist uh, take their unit. Uh, a lot of the uh, fire companies they have SUVs. They can take that their SUV to a scene and assist our career uh, EMTs and volunteer EMTs and um, paramedics. Yeah, going back to the time, uh, uh, the response time. I believe this. Uh, the standard is around eight, eight or nine minutes. Uh, so I, I'm sure that's what you're shooting for. Uh, I have a question, uh, Steve. Right now, until the uh, commission gets all of its license, the board will be actually function as the oversight, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the management. Uh, when do you expect to get the commission to get the license they required? We're we are basically just waiting on some government. Um, we're waiting on on the government. Imagine that um, to, to issue these licenses over to the county. Um, so we're working parallel with the board currently, and once those licenses get transferred, we're expecting that to happen within a month or two to get those li- uh, licenses transferred over to the county. Then we'll be a county department. So what happens when when it's transferred to the county? Are you going to incorporate the expertise that currently exists to the board, or is it just going to be a handshake and say thanks, and we're going to take over everything? It's it's basically going to be a like you said a handshake and say thanks. It's going to be under the department, um, under the county, and everything's going, still going to be ran the same. We're just not going to have a board that meets once a volunteer board that meets once a month. Um, so they they will basically the director of the emergency services work will work directly under the county administrator. Will you be bringing a new person in? Currently, no, sir. Okay, so uh, the director of emergency services, what capacity does he currently hold? He or she? The the director of uh, emergency services, a gentleman named Mike Sign. Um, he's he's basically in charge of all um, just just the, the ambulance side of the world with our career folks um he's in charge of daily operations uh finance he has a lot on his plate right now and of course uh with the transition as well too uh he's a very very busy guy and uh i do know that uh, uh he's working very hard to get these licenses transferred over uh so we can we can have everything put together and done uh we'll have it into the county and um which then we'll move, keep moving forward. Now, a uh, an aspect of the of the volunteer system is the cultural involvement of the volunteer fire stations or volunteer ambulance stations. Uh, and as we were making the conversion, we recognized the importance of this cultural activity, and we worked very hard to preserve it within the volunteer stations. Uh, have you done the same thing, or have you attempted to do the same thing in Jefferson County? So that is our hope. We certainly do want to work with the volunteer stations. That's why we are keeping our staffing in their fire stations. Uh, so at 3 a.m., there's a fire call. Our career staffing will jump on their fire trucks to go out on a scene, and then their volunteers can then meet up at the scene. We'll already have apparatus there waiting in um you know, waiting there. Uh, hopefully, the volunteers will then add on to the call and come out. Um, that is certainly the plan. Uh, we're still working on MOUs uh, for the um, volunteers to be able to ride our ambulances, uh, and we're also we're going to be working with them on, as as rapid response units as well. But it's my understanding uh, you will be taking the uh, the ownership of the of the vehicles, both ambulance and the fire trucks, uh, but you'll be leaning or uh, leasing the the buildings themselves. Is that correct? Yes, we are leasing the buildings, and we are we are taking ownership of the ambulances. We are not taking ownership of the fire apparatus. Okay. Um, yeah, just to be clear. So yeah, thanks for clarification. Uh, my yeah. phone is going to blow up this morning if you say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're only taking, we, we have taken, we used ARPA money to purchase the ambulances. That's how we were able to purchase all the ambulances that we need. Uh, I think we, we bought 10 ambulances. Um, and we are not, again, the state code requires the county commission to be responsible for ambulance and requires the volunteers to be responsible for um, and you, you are correct that we are leasing space from the volunteer, the, from those four uh, volunteer companies. 
Yeah, I've, I've been through this process twice, once in Fairfax County in the early 80s and then again in Prince William County, uh, in both in Virginia. The One of the big stumbling blocks in, in my experience is operational control on a fire ground. Uh, where, whether it's a fire ground or accident scene, whatever the case may be, who who is in charge? Do the the uh, these paid EMS folks report to the chief officer, the, the, which would be a volunteer on the fire ground? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. So and, when there's a call that goes out, if our if our career guys are there, they will report to the chief. The chief will have uh, will be the acting command officer. And is the rank structure? Where I don't, I actually don't know how how the Jefferson County volunteers are structured. But typically, you've you've got chief and assistant chief and captain, lieutenant, sergeant, that kind of thing. Um, are those also recognized by the new career folks? Yes, sir. They they certainly are. Okay. Well, that will avoid a lot of of potential train wrecks of you know who's who's in charge of whom. So this implies then that the new EMS personnel are trained in pumper operations and fire ground command, that kind of thing. Yes, sir. They are, they would they will all be dual trained. So, who are you looking for in terms of? I mean, that actually takes that's a fairly advanced level of, um, of particularly for EMS. I mean, often in my experience, fire and EMS kind of uh, they cross train, but one emphasizes the other. Uh, but but it takes time. So, you're looking for people that are coming out of fire schools in in other counties to hire on here. Well, may, the main thing we're looking for right now are paramedics. Um, we we need, based on this Fitch study, they're recommending a paramedic on every crew. We do have a, uh, a BL, one, I think one BLS or two BLS units right now. Um, we we want to convert them all to ALS. That's our plan. So we're, I guess our goal is to hire paramedics and then dual train everybody. Uh, we would love to have as many paramedics uh, as possible, uh, th- but don't get me wrong. There are some paramedics and EMTs that are not comfortable with fire, okay? And there's some some who aren't comfortable with the EMT side of the world. Uh, so they typically, one might drive the fire truck, one might drive the ambulance when they go out. It's just it's just a preference. Steve, I was struck by what you said earlier. Uh, you, you you have six units available during the day uh, and five at night. Uh, the reason for that is you anticipate fewer calls at night, so five can handle the, the, the county as well as six during the day? Yes, sir, that is exactly right. And, and um, um, just I just had a conversation with uh, Eddie Gokenauer last week and um, just trying to figure out what kind of modeling they have and i believe that berkeley county has two 12-hour units and they're getting ready to add another 12-hour unit uh so there are more call volumes during the day and less at night for whatever reason it is uh, i think the the, what happens at night is a little bit more intense but during the day uh there's just more call volume yeah and in berkeley county the uh uh the Peers that do not have uh, paid staff, uh, the the volunteers still assume that responsibility. Uh, but you're right, Berkeley County is migrating more for uh, fully staffed, paid. But it's going to take. They're doing that through a period of time. So right now they're depending a great deal upon the volunteers. Uh, but I'm understanding you're not using the vol. You'll not be using volunteers at all. Is that correct? Um, we plan. We plan to, we feel, or I'll say I feel like it's a feeder system into our uh, into our career uh, side of the world. Um, so we're still working on the EM, the MOUs that have volunteers ride on the ambulances. Um, that is that is our plan. So we we are still planning on working with them. Okay, on the ambulance. What about the fire uh, uh, the fire uh, fire side? What role um, do the volunteers play on the fire side? Fire uh, bo- the volunteers control the the fire 100 percent we just assist them uh with our career with our career staffing okay so everything we're talking about is the ambulance side uh as far as the change as opposed to the fire side yes sir okay steve what does a new ambulance cost in 2023 that's a loaded question it really depends on how it's equipped um yeah an, an equipped unit is pushes right around anywhere from two hundred fifty to three hundred thousand. 
and you were able to procure 10 of those this year? Uh, yes, sir. Did you have... We, we purchased... I'm sorry, we purchased the units from the volunteer stations. And what... Oh, so they were already in existence. It's not like you had to order 10 new ambulances. Oh, no, sir. We, okay. They were already in existence. We had appraisals done on all of them. Um, most of those were already equipped, obviously. And the only thing we had to do is uh, re-letter them. All right. I knew you were buying some. I didn't know all 10 of those would be uh, that were already in existence, which obviously uh, that helps because I, I was wondering in in these current times how you could possibly get 10 ambulances in a timely fashion manufactured, delivered, and ready to ready to use in time for your change over there. So that answered that question for us. It, it, that, yeah, that's you're exactly right. That's pretty much impossible right now. Um, I was talking to the director a week ago, and I think if we ordered a brand new one today, we're looking about a 24-month delivery. Yeah, that would make more sense. I was going to say, who do you know, Steve? Start uh, spreading those contacts around to the rest of us here. Hey, uh, quickly, before we, <laughs> run out of, before we run out of time, the legislative session concluded on uh, Saturday. Uh, it, as far as you can tell at this point, it's still early out to digest everything that was passed. Uh, will there be any effects to the counties, Jefferson County specifically, of which you are the commission president, that you watched? Yeah, there was a few things that um, that I was watching. Um, there's two bills. I'll, I'll, I know we're running out of time here. I'll try to get through those quickly. Uh, three, 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 two. Um, that gives Jefferson County um, a fourth magistrate, and that, that won't happen until January first, twenty five. And we also have our own judicial circuit. Uh, we'll have two circuit judges then as well too. So what that means for Jefferson County, we're getting some more judges, um, and I guess the the, the circuit, the, I think the family court circuit still remains the same. It's just the just the judicial circuit, uh, circuit, excuse me, the circuit judges and an additional magistrate. Um, I do know they have a, a pretty heavy workload there, so hopefully we, we'll get some more judges, and we won't have such a long uh, uh, lag of uh, cases here in Jefferson County. Mm -hmm. Another one that I was watching um, is 3013. It's a hilltop. I call it the hilltop bill, but it um, authorizes Jefferson County to levy a special district excise tax. And that was mainly for the hilltop house down in Harpers Ferry. So would that be like the addition of like a 1% sales tax or something like that? Uh, it's a, um, no, that that's already in place in Harpers Ferry. What this allows the developer to do is to um, have levy. Um, let me get let me get this correct there. I, I actually pulled up some old notes. We voted on this in November, and then it went to the legislature legislature for them to vote on. It was a levy, so they can um, issue bonds and notes um, to finance development expenditures. That's what it's mainly for. I see. The county. I thought the county currently had this authority. Don't you have that authority? Has this just been specific to uh, Harpers Ferry? This is this is specific, excuse me, for um, Harpers Ferry and the Hilltop uh, um, Hotel. There are only, in my understanding, there's only six uh, excise tip districts in the state of West Virginia. I think this uh, will now be seven. Um, the other districts you might be familiar with, I know one of them is the Cabela's of Willing, uh, West Virginia, in the, in the northern panhandle. Mm -hmm. And another district is, uh, I only know of two of them, two out of the two six. So there's one in, there's one in uh, Morgantown. Um, and for life of me, I can't remember the name of the shopping center. But they also have this excise tip district. And I think Martinsburg has one as well. Okay. So in regards to how that affects the county revenues, Steve, can you explain that relationship? What, what it really doesn't so much affect the uh, county revenues. It just gives the tool to a developer to expand economic growth in the county. So it, it directly doesn't affect, indirectly, it creates, it, in the long term, we will, it'll create more revenues to get the hilltop, help get the hilltop house built and running. Very good. Any uh, things that you wanted to make sure our audience knew about, Steve, that we didn't ask you about? No, sir. I think that covers everything. Um, I mean, they, I looked over their bills last night. Um, just the, the, There's a whole list of bills. Uh, 
certainly going to meet up with our uh, local delegation and, and go over all of them. I'll know more um, uh, details later. Um, the Dutch really has to settle for them coming back from Charleston. They, they got done at midnight on Saturday night. Mm-hmm. So uh, I certainly will get up to speed on the rest of the bills. There's a few bills that do, that do affect um, the county. And I'm just looking forward to meeting with our local delegation to get more information on those. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate your time this morning as always. Thank you.